Uh, in stark contrast to, uh, to Betty and Karen, I'm an introvert. Um, I don't particularly enjoy social meetings. I'd rather be with a good book somewhere. I, hopefully this sounds familiar to some of you. I, I, you know, my strength is finding people who uh, will do the work that I don't want to do. I just want to help people read, and I can't wait until I retire, and I can just be a volunteer tutor. <coughs> um, but, you know, it's, it's weird where life brings you. I'm also not going to talk about budgets, by the way, because I'm, I'm just in awe of, of the money that's, uh, that's been raised. I think Word had an $8,000 budget last year, and we were happy to have that. Um, so we're in that position right at the beginning where we're looking for different funding streams and um, that sort of thing. But let me, let me kind of quickly do uh, a history because I think since I can't talk about fundraising so much and since I'm in the, in the same boat as trying to build our agency up, I think I'm going to talk a little bit about the values um, that got us all into this, um, which I think is a big national uh, dialogue that doesn't seem to be happening. Um, so. Um, the city of Palmdale got the uh, California Library Literacy Services uh, startup grant back in 2001 to start a library literacy program, which we were all grateful to have. Um, I was lucky enough to be hired as the coordinator from beginning until uh, they ended it last year. Um, and we had, I think, pretty good success in a lot of the stuff that's already been talked about, the networking, um, making inroads in the community communicating with the, the local media, having literacy festivals, et cetera, et cetera. I think I'm preaching to the choir with a lot of you on this. Um, last July, well, let me, let, let me actually kind of go back. We, we started a literacy coalition back in 2004 uh, that became Word AV. And the literacy coalition was an attempt to get not only people that were involved in literacy, there was myself, there was another small literacy program that the uh, county of LA did. Uh, up in the Lancaster Library. Um, I had mentored a faith-based group up in Rosemond, which is just across the Kern County line. So there were about, it was about 20 miles that separate the three of us, three completely different uh, literacy groups. Two of them funded, uh, the other one was more or less a grassroots effort. Um, and Word was basically a place to bring in people who weren't specifically, that wasn't their main mission, but they understood that literacy, and we've touched on this before, it's not as much an academic issue as it is uh, a social issue. You know, we're talking about improving quality of life with all the measurable income uh, outcomes, uh, the goals, the roles and goals that we do in California. Um, it's really about making people's lives better according to what that means for that person. Um, so we all kind of shared that philosophy and, and we're able to meet as a coalition with um, the local community college, adult schools, you know, Barnes and Noble, uh, it's a big aerospace town up there, so we had representatives from Northrop Grumman and Lockheed Martin and, and so on and so forth. A uh, pretty diverse group of people. In 2008, don't know if you guys have heard this, there was a beginning of a recession. Um, there was a literacy clerk in Palmdale. Um, she was caught in the first wave of layoffs in, in Palmdale. We had 300, the city had 350 um, employees at the time, it finally got whittled down to, I think it's about 180 right now. And so 2008, uh, big layoffs, 2009, big layoffs, and 2010 was when they finally got, uh, they decided they, they uh, had made the decision that the literacy program would be the one to go. Um, there were 18 people laid off the day I got laid off, and they cut some other programs, so it was hard, hard to feel sorry for myself when they had kids programs and neighborhood houses and things of that na uh, nature. But as you can imagine, the worst thing was, you know, okay, so July 17th, we had an infrastructure and a funding stream and a system uh, to be sort of a central point for literacy in the community. And on July 18th, we didn't. We had a lot of people that were concerned, a lot of people that wanted to keep things going, um, but really didn't have any idea how. There wasn't too much of a template to how to do that. And so a lot of discussions, a lot of uh, breakfast meetings, lunch meetings, that sort of thing. And going back to 2008, seeing the, uh, the writing on the wall, and I, I think maybe this is, this is something that I would, if, if I have one thing to say to everybody, is put yourself in the position for the worst to happen. I mean, you know, uh, what, what's the expression? Uh, hope for the best and plan for the worst. Um, 
hopefully nobody's funding ever gets cut or programs don't disappear overnight, but we've seen examples of some of that happening even before Palmdale hit. And in many cases, literacy sort of went away in the community. Um, in this case, um, in 2008, when we lost the literacy clerk, we started doing a few things in Palmdale that have helped keep us afloat. Um, and some of you have already done stuff like this, and, I, and I'm sure have thought of things, but um, it's kind of interesting to watch the theory play out in real life. And so um, California, first of all, uh, the state system has a great adult learner leadership uh, program, uh, and Palmdale had sent several people there um, to, uh, to learn how to fundraise and, and interact in the community and sort of be the, uh, the voice and the face of the literacy program besides just the coordinator. And so we were lucky to have a couple of graduates that took it seriously, came back, ran workshops, got out, did PR. So that was already in place from 2008 on. About a year later, some of the tutors said, you know, we'd like to have our own. <laughs> it was kind of like the, uh, the, big, the big brother being jealous of the little one, you know. Yeah, the, le the learners have their own literacy uh, leadership program. Can we have ours? So the tutors um, got together, about a dozen of them, and said, you know, what can we do? And so um, we kind of entered into that mentoring uh, teaching them the mechanics of what we did in Palmdale, what the general literacy culture was. I mean, they'd had some of that in the tutor training, but most of their time was, was with workshops and one-on-one -on -one tutoring. So they got a little bit more involved in, in the logistics of how to, how to run things. So that by the time the program was gone, July 17th last year, um, on July 18th, there wasn't any panic. There was sort of like, this is terrible, um, wish it hadn't happened, but we're gonna make this work. Now, those of you in the room who know me know that I'm a, the, you know, the glasses half empty type of guy, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I've heard this before. Um, but let's have our meetings, let's see where the commitment is. Um, much to my surprise, and we were talking um, earlier about counterintuitive um, things that happened and things you didn't expect, um, people step up. It's kind of an interesting thing. Um, these are all volunteers, which is why Word can have an $8,000 budget and still thrive or at least survive. I, I'm, I'm aiming towards thriving, but not, not there quite yet. Um, the Palmdale program, in a, in a much, abbreviated, much abbreviated form, still exists. They still got 30 tutors that are committed to reporting their hours, um, reporting on outcomes, meeting with their students. They've got a pretty extensive workshop um, uh, program and schedule that works on everything from phonics to writing to a uh, little workforce training. Um, the learn group, the learners group, um, they do the, they maintain the book club. Um, they also do a few workshops. Um, they also do fundraising for themselves and it doesn't take a whole lot to keep a, a, a book club going. So they've made, they've made that work. Um, one of one of our former learners, and well, here's another piece of advice. Well, if you're thinking about sustainability, uh, don't burn your bridges. Uh, not only building partnerships, but people that kind of um, you don't think are doing the right thing or uh, you have difficult relationships with. And in this case, I'm talking about the city of Palmdale. A lot of hard feelings the day after, not necessarily with me, but, um, but with some of the tutors. How could they do that, right? How could you just gut a literacy program like that? Well, a couple of us wrote nice letters to the newspaper and said, hey, thanks for the run. Thanks for the city, you know, at least being enlightened enough to keep a literacy program going. Um, praising, praising the leadership during, during better times. Um, so that when it came time to ask if we could still meet in the same place and have the sites, um, can we still use the city um, connections? Uh, they were quite willing to work with the reconstituted group. Um, so one of, and, and the best example I can give of that is one of our former le learners who went through the Learner Institute um, had gone to the volunteer coordinator for the city and said, I want to do a reading program uh, for kids that, you know, I couldn't read when I was a kid. I want to give back. I think I've learned enough where I can do that. I learned some leadership skills uh, in the institute. And uh, so the three of us have started batting together 
um, going out to the neighborhood houses and a few other sites and starting a small, you know, after school kids bring in their homework and that sort of thing. Um, and also trying to assess and, and address literacy issues. Uh, that's a learner. That's not a tutor. That's not me. She, she had the idea and she had, had the drive. Um, there's a number of other things. We talked about partnership, and these are, these are smaller partnership and not financially driven, but thinking outside the box, and I know some of you have done this. Um, we just sat down with our local domestic violence center. Uh, so big need for family uh, literacy there. Um, again, let me, let me touch on this. You know, I don't, I don't know about any of the rest of you, but when I got into literacy, I figured it was going to be about reading and writing. I didn't, I didn't figure I was going to be like a social worker and, you know, armchair psychologist and uh, kind of like cab drivers and hairdressers. And, you know, you're, you're dealing with people. It's relationship driven. Um, and that's what you're going to get at the, at the domestic violence uh, center. A lot of issues, and literature, journaling about self-esteem issues and how to better your lives. Um, all of you know the statistics uh, and the correlations between uh, domestic violence um, and all the other social issues, the jail populations, and, and low literacy levels. So in a small way, I've given up trying to save the world. I'm a 57-year-old I'm idealist, but I've kind of given up saving the world. I'm just interested in my small part of the world at this point. And that seems to be contagious. Uh, we, we talked about passion earlier. Um, if you're passionate about something and people see that you're going to follow through, you can always, you know, God love them. You can always get a band of followers who will follow you, uh, you know, and volunteer their time. Um, so I think we're, we're fairly successful. The Roseman Group keeps going. They've got, I think, 20 tutors and about 30 learners right now. Lancaster, uh, County of L.A., uh, stopped their uh, literacy services as well, although they wouldn't say that uh, because, you know, they still have computers and people can get online and access stuff, um, which is a whole other definition of literacy. Uh, but they don't have the one-on-one -on -one program any longer. Uh, the freedom with Word AV that I didn't have with um, with the state-sponsored program is that, um, you know, we we our target audience was Eng English-speaking adults, um, and so with Word AV we can do family literacy, ESL, wherever the need is, and I'm I'm pretty gratified about that. If you had asked me 10 months ago if I would have been happy about where I was, you know, people were asking me on July 18th, well, what are you going to do now? How are you going to keep literacy going? It's like, man, I need to get a job. You know, what are you talking to me about literacy for? <laughs> you know, i got to survive. I'm in that survival mode. But it pulls you in, doesn't it? It's, uh, it's hard to let go. I mean, I think there's a couple of people in the room who have said that they were going to, thinking about career changes, and, you know, when I retire, I won't be part of this. But it, it, gets, it gets its hooks into you. And I think it's because it is foundational. It is fundamental. I think it's at the source of every single social problem we've got. I mean... You know, let's go from Anthony Weiner to the economy to, you know, you, n you name it. You know, we've already talked about the uh, statistics on domestic violence and, and such and crime. Um, so it's a powerful message that's just waiting to burst out. And I think the issue for all of us is how do you keep it going, whether it's in a small way up in our community or in, you know, I'm, I'm envious. I mean, these guys have done a bang-up job in Tucson and Modesto. Um, but you don't have to be gigantic. You know, you strive towards being gigantic. You know, that's, that's my definition of thriving. But you can do it on a smaller level. Before, before um, I was at Palmdale, uh, the AV Literacy Council survived up in Lancaster for about 25 years. Really small group of folks, uh, Laubach based. And, um, you know, it was kind of one day at a time and one learner at a time. The numbers weren't there. Were they successful? Yeah. I mean, did, were they successful by some of the means that get measured? Probably not, but, you know, it's about making that impact. All politics is local. If you don't start where you're at, you know, it's not going to happen. So I have no idea if any of this is resonating with people, but, um, you know, I would, just, I would just urge that if you think that it's, that it's an uphill climb, that it's hopeless, I mean, we're still here, and I want to be up here. I want to be Tucson. Um, and it's probably, it's probably not going to happen for a while. It's a long-term plan. But you learn from people. Um, 
you know, you make those partnerships, you make those relationships, you delegate tasks that you're not very good at yourself, and you put yourself in a position that if you have a funded program and that funding goes away, that you can at least keep the fires burning, you know, until better times, whenever those are, and you hope you get them. But it's interesting to hear that, that donations are actually stabilizing or, or, or increasing if you find the right place to look and be creative. And I think that's probably all I've, I've really got. Well, I've got a lot more to say, but I mean, that's, uh, that's kind of my overview. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.